I am Street. Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here. Back with more Danganronpa. We're doing the trial. Um, I tried to ch see if I could change the settings of the difficulty because I looked at my first episode again. I set the logic to normal. I set the action to um, easy. And um, I can't change it. So for the rest of the game, that's just how it's going to be. Um, which I think is fine. Um, but... I'm um, sorry if people want me to have a harder time with the trial. I can't change it now, but maybe for later games. Now that I'm familiar with what the trials are like, I'll leave the difficulty on normal for following games. But for now, action's going to be easy. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, so I'm looking over to files now. 2 a.m. discovered in the... The body was discovered in the girls' locker room on the second floor of the school. The cause of death was a blow to the head with a blunt object. She was killed instantly. Killed instantly. Okay. Sakura wanted to get stronger, but she didn't want anyone near her. She didn't want the girls near her. She may have been meeting someone in her locker room the night she was murdered. The dumbbell has a significant amount of blood on it. Mondo said she wanted to... She admired strength more than anything else. Want to get stronger. Card reader. The e-handbook thing, right? Um, males for the males and the girls for the girls. Lending is forbidden, but for some reason you could take dead people's and Leon's is broken. I'm just going over all the truth bullets now because you can't look over it during the trial and it's annoying. Broken e-handbook, genocide jack, case file. Uh word bloodlust was written and split personality they were all hung with scissors Aoi's account oh okay so Aoi's account said kept her distance from the other girls it's been noticed that she got along remarkably with her male classmates that's very similar to Sakura's boys locker room carpet has the coffee stain two locker room posters they've been switched and the one that was in the boys room has the blood Chihiro's e handbook was not found on her corpse and has apparently gone missing. Okay, that totally didn't know. Status of the dead body. Um, hands have been bound with some kind of rope. It's, a, it's an extension cord. Um, disappearing stain because they got switched. Library desk lamp. Yaku was known to use this lamp often. The extension cord has gone missing. Okay. Celeste's account. Oh yeah, she spotted Chihiro in the nighttime. Exercise closer to a duffel bag. Pose were not found at the crime scene. Okay. All right, let's go. Finish preparation. Also, I'm streaming today because I feel like during the week I'll let's be. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So your votes will I'll be determine busy the results. during the week because it's Halloween week. If you can I have to help decorate the office, it, but I'm also gonna get ready to go to Japan. So. Punishment. But. I highly doubt I'll be able to um, stream during the week. The blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay then. So first off, let's talk about the murder weapon. First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. Okay, yeah, so this is what easy heroes fatal injury. Fatal it injury. appears it was a head wound. Yep. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? It was a dumbbell. You think he has improved that contradicts what I said? <laughs> oh no, whoops, uh Chihiro's fatal injury. Ah! Uh, it appears it was a head wound. I thought I was just answering him. I didn't want to refute him. Oh no, I'm sorry. Sorry, Taka. What kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. Nope. Why is it moving so fast? That certainly would make for a powerful weapon. Poor Chihiro. No! Weapon had to be yeah 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 I know what it is. Chihiro's fatal injury. It It'll take time it for the iron pipe weapon. to get to here, so to I Monokuma should just wait fire, here. The killer used a blunt instrument, but what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? 
I bet it was an iron pipe. Pyo, what? I got it. Oh my gosh, that's so annoying. Yeah, 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 yeah. She heroes fatal injury. Is there a way to fast forward? Influence gauge, focus gauge, concentration. By holding down the R1 button, you can concentrate and slow down the passage of time. Fast forward, hold the circle button to speed up the debate. Okay. Hold down to L1 to open your truth. But I only have one bullet, so who cares? It appears it was according to the Monokuma file. What kind of blood? I bet it was an iron pipe. No, 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 no. Loot the gun again. Interesting. No! That certainly uh, I hate this. This is why I need the action to be easy. I'm not used to this. Yeah. She heroes, it appears it was according to the Monokuma file. What kind of blood? I bet it was an iron pipe. Shoot it! Thank you. No, that's wrong. You stupid! The dumbbell had blood on it! Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell? Found at the scene of the crime? It was covered in blood. And there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. That I did not know. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You... looked at her head wound? Yay! That's so creepy! Creepy, but necessary. If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, I believe the criminal behind this No, we should talk about the location of the murder. Good. What? For real? Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. He just wants to figure out who Genocide Jack is. He doesn't care about who the real killer is. Oh my gosh. Genocide Jack, the fiendish serial killer. Did he really kill Chihiro? A new element has been added to the non-stop debates. What? <sighs> For this debate, lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your reactions. Your truth bullets will disappear if they hit these lines, so think of them as obstacles in your debate. But there's a way to keep the white no noise from getting in your way. Press the X button to who attached a silencer, which can you can use to shoot down the white noise. Oops. However, if you shoot an actual remark with your silencer, stop of the white noise. The time limit will decrease, so take careful aim when you have your silencer out. If your action difficulty is set to gentle, white noise won't be appear at all. In case you can forget about the silencer, just focus on the situation in front of you. Okay, that won't appear for me. Haha! -ha! Good luck and have fun. Culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure of it. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible. We don't have Why? a serial killer what here. Makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on. There's just no proof for it. Ah! No, that's wrong. I might know one reason he could be involved. What? Wait, the portraits of the dead students just stay there? Smile. What the heck? While I was looking around the archive They're not the gone library. after the first trial. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. More importantly, your chin is touching the, the line of your collar. Of That's not good design. Case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Boob-lust. Boob-lust. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. It's actually blood-lust. But more important is the other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? Why don't you just finish your thought, you dumb idiot? The other characteristic of every Genocide Jack case, which the world at large doesn't know, if I'm mistaken, has to do with the positioning of the body. How the bo victim was positioned. Apparently. In every Genocide Jack case, 
the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. Makoto, why However, would you know about Shihiro it? Shihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. Not exactly the so, same. How did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? Because you know of it, and you probably forced Hifumi to hang her up. There's only one logical answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. No fucking way! You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. In fact, it's Toko. What? <laughs> what? Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. What is this kid's deal? You lie! Wh what? Hey, okay, wait, oh, hold on a sec. Toko has like, blood of phobia or blood whatever, phobia. remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another riddle. Why don't you just say Why things straightforward, so man? It's a riddle for sure, but I feel like I understand it. What it means for Genocide Jack to be Toko, but also to not be Toko. The answer is that she's not just one person, but multiple people, right? Hangman's <gasps> Gambit. Um, I forgot. Yeah, I think I have to shoot it with... Shoot the lasers with the triangle, okay. Cheers! Be her hurt shit. Let's try C. Nope. Uh not P. Uh Schizo? Get get skit Multiple personalities disorder. Now I understand. Yeah. I <laughs> uh, it's too many Is things it to because do. Because genocide Jack has a split personality. But can you spell the word huh? knife? I think I read that somewhere in the file too. They thought that the suspect might have what did they call it? Dissociative identity disorder. Oh, okay. But still, to go and say that about Miss Fukawa is. How does he remember everyone's last name? Perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. What? I don't remember. Whoa, the one thing that shows Toko could have a split personality has to do with her behavior. Her behavior changed? I Ow! Died. I don't remember. You were talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. That's really. She fainted when she Shut saw up. Chihiro's corpse, and then when she woke up. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that that body hit that. <laughs> she must have hit her real hard when she fainted. Rolls from her back top. Bah, bah, bah. It's quite concerning. She sounds completely different. I don't remember she that, but I remember funny, that face. That's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can handle blood, and one that obviously can. You're gonna get wrinkles if you frown like that, man. <laughs> So when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? I don't know Genocide Jack have control! I'll drop out the killer! Drop out the murderous fiend! The reason she locked herself in her okay, room Okay, but if she was really that afraid of Genocide in. Jack, I don't think she would have let out that side of her personality to kill Chihiro. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. <gasps> How? 
Yeah. How can you know all this? Yeah, you're an obsessive stalker, dude. I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Wait, what? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And you're just gonna spill her secret just like that without her permission? You jerk. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> this is all I alive. hope he dies. Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? You... Promised. I can't believe you lied! I can, he's a selfish you douche. You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. <sighs> well, I didn't ask you if I could be your assistant, but you dragged me around everywhere. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. This isn't the real world, though. We're stuck in a psycho school. Yeah! Uh -oh! <sighs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. You have no concrete proof it was her. But in spite of that promise... Ah, keep our promise, don't worry, never again. Let Genocide have a You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. That's the only reason I promise! How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that. But you weren't able to do it. I bet- oh, You just gosh. couldn't resist that rush you got from killing. Could you? Toko, get better standards. I, I tried! I swear I tried to control it! But, but... but your efforts were useless. What a Okay, he just wants to publicly shame her. I don't think Toko actually did it because there's still so much evidence to go through. I don't think they're all going to be used to, like, prove her innocence. <laughs> I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The person? Y you don't mean... Ma 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 Toko's body suddenly lunged backwards. A huge thud echoed across the courtroom, but in the next second... Oh my! Hello there! Is it me you were hoping to see? Oh my word! Yes! What the heck?! So you figured it out, huh? Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? Why is her tongue so long? <laughs> I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! Ha ha ha, Genocide Jill. What the fuck is this? Toko, what happened to you? Not Toko, that's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. Is it though? So what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? You should turn a blind eye to one's fault. <laughs> oh boy. She's so intense. Like they say, sound and murderous mind, sound and murderous body. This one is so different from the one we've. I would have to loved know. to hear Miyuki Sawashita voice this, but yes, it's so well, nice the to have them say their lines in English. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun. <laughs> This is the murderous fiend genocide, Jack. This is... this is... this is beyond insane. Um, Miss Jack, uh, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? What's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you. I am the mastermind of all masterminds! Sure you are. Just kidding! Okay. Then, it's not true? Of course it's not true! How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid! And a 
another thing. The police and government and society in the outside Wait, world so are totally powerless. It's not genocide, Jack or Jill in this case. So why the heck was Byakuya going on and on about it? I mean, they just let this idiotic Did he just want to like frame her so that he gets rid of her so that um he doesn't bother him about going out on dates? What a loser. Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Just kidding again! <laughs> this should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. She just said she wasn't, and so did Monokuma. What the F? There's clearly a motive. What? So there should be no doubt. There it. No! All of Genocide Jack's victims were guys! She was a girl. Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. She already told you, and you already blabbed it to us, so it doesn't matter. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. You already ruined her life! So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. I slap him. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. Huh? But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. I can. Byakuya. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah. I could never believe a word you say, you monster! Okay, but if we all vote for her and we're all wrong, that the black it actual black end goes free and we all die, guys. Maybe. Maybe she's totally right about that, but... But something's still bothering me. What she said, I need to get some more details about all of this. I don't see what was wrong. Other than she didn't use scissors, status of the dead body. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone. You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking. When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi. No scissors. No, that's wrong. Shut your face, you liar! Are the methods of murder really exactly You're a lying liar who lies! I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Huh? How is it any different? Oh, well, he doesn't know, so... Oh, uh -oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage! Let me tell you! I want to listen to this trial in Japanese. I murder with passion and conviction! I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the, the noodles, sauce, everything. The pasta. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. Yeah. This is no creation of mine. Thanks. Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. There are two clear differences between the genocide Jack Makoto, cases you're so smart. You have sense. There's one clear difference between the murders. In the photos uh, from the other genocide Jack cases, look at the neck and stomach. Oh, I didn't see it. Uh, fatal injury. For one, the cause of death is different. In the genocide oh, stop Jack showing murders, that picture! All the victims were killed the same way. According to the case file, they were all like I know it's fake, and you know, a pair of scissors. <sighs> like the blood is but pink, Chihiro but still. A blow to the head, right? <sighs> Seeing the yes. scissors stabbed into the that body is, is ooh. different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change? Wait, no one else saw the the case file thing, so more. they're only taking you at your one word. Whatever. Right? In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce! Could you please stop comparing killing people to cooking? 
So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? Man, I would love for Byakuya to be the killer, but I don't think it was him. He's just psycho. But I wish he was. That's right, the second difference is related to how she was suspended. In the photos of the other Genocide Jack cases, all the other victims were stabbed through their hands. Here you'll see a clear difference. What was used to suspend her... I got it! Oh, my health is healing what back. The killer used to suspend her? They used some kind of rope to hang her up by her wrists. What is your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. Stop. Specifically, Stop. pairs of razor sharp scissors. And guess what? I use my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangement. Like I said, I'm a professional, so naturally Man, she must be really strong if she could stab scissors through bodies and, you know, lift them up. And, 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 and you know what else? Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. There's three! Big Mac? Are you referring to me? Listen up, Big Mac! There's yeah, actually one more. one more difference! Huh? My word, you really didn't notice? Take a look at who the victims That's were exactly what I noticed. Case. There's a pattern there, just waiting to be discovered. A pattern? Figure that out, and it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. She wasn't a lolly girl, Celeste is. Hmm, let's see. There was a pattern surrounding the Genocide Jack victims and Chihiro didn't fit it. If you look at the names of every victim, what you'll notice is... I think I figured it out. I know why she couldn't have killed Chihiro. Chihiro was a girl! Because Chihiro was her friend. Because Chihiro was a girl? Bingo! Bull died right on the money! What are you talking about? In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. They're all dudes! Stop! Joeing the... But, 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 yeah, I'm not not reading that. They were all guys? That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little men! Yeah, okay, you don't see how crazy this girl is, and you just like straight up insult her to her face. Like, aren't you afraid of her stabbing you one day? <laughs> I can't believe I said it! I'm so embarrassed! The hell is wrong with you? I can't help it! I'm just a full throttle boy on boy fangirl! Whoa, okay. But now I'm on the fast track to becoming a full fledged man, madam! So, since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, you wouldn't kill her? Would an Italian chef suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line. That's the absolute reality of the one and only. We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your You philosophy. shut your face. You try to but wrongfully frame her. To it. It's a different matter entirely when you're forced to kill in order to survive. It was him. It was him. Never mind. Like, I had the theory that it was um, Celeste and Byakuya masterminding together and they made Hifumi do the, um, do the dirty work and like kill Chihiro and pull pull her up and then Byaku was gonna throw both of them under the bus and he would get out alive. No, I think he just worked alone. He's uh, he's annoying. Quiet, lowly yeah, she's she doesn't have to listen to you. Lowly cur? Yeah, don't piss her off. I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, then I would have killed all of you. Why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect. Or that. That does make some amount of sense. Plus, whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors. Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? Maybe you use the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school? There's knives in the kitchen. There's got to be scissors in the warehouse. Any scissors? I don't just use any scissors. I only use my own set of high-class envy of the entire world scissors! Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Dun dun! <laughs> She's fully equipped! That's right! So I can kill anywhere, anytime! Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope 
when I have my trusty scissors by my side. Go ahead, tell me I'm wrong. You can't, can you? Gutter dogs, all of you. Nano Jen, now I know why you like her so much. Okay, I thought Toko was go- oh man, but she still can die because if she's not in her Genocide Jill persona, she's so weak and like, like, um, she's a pushover. I feel like someone could still- she could be targeted the next trial because everyone knows she's Genocide Jill now. They're like, I need to be safe, I'll get rid of her. Sakura might do that to keep everyone all safe. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> Is that gonna I be the next no victim what's going on killer pair? Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? <sighs> but the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal. Uh the police and the Akuya knew about it. Actually, hold on, there is one person. One person who could have copied Genocide Jack cases. It's obvious, because that's all he ever freaking talks about. Oh, I should push the left button. Here's my answer! Byakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. Plus, you'd already looked through the Genocide Jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Are you saying... Mr. Togami did it? Yes! And he knew about the broken E handbooks, so it has to be him! Then, the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it! The adorable glasses man was behind Oh, him. that <laughs> face! Oh, I'm on fire! Well, Biakia. What's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Yeah, now die. Then I must ask. When would you say I began acting suspicious? The Surely whole freaking time! Hmm. Looking back and thinking about it now, the way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. I don't remember. Locker rooms. They're suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. What are you Suspicious? Nobody searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker room. Oh yeah, you, you really want wanted us to go in there. Right away, right? But since you're a guy, shouldn't we have examined the guys' locker room? Naturally, thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? Yes. The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence, why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay then. Why? What's yeah. So why would you about? think it was immediately in the locker rooms? Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. There was a clear contradiction from what Byakuya just said. I need to make it clear to everyone. A new. What do you mean a new element? <gasps> Going to add something called a truth flashback. If you aim at a weak spot and hold down the triangle button, then you'll memorize that weak spot. This memorized phrase can only be shot once as a truth bullet. If you shoot or change the truth bullet, it will disappear from your truth cylinder. However, you can use the flashback feature as many times as you want. If you don't seem to have the answer to a lie or contradiction loaded in your truth bullets, it might be wise to memorize a different weak spot and use it to make your case. When it's the best time to flashback, well, you'll just have to use your keen wits, won't you? In this case, though, I will say that if you don't use a flashback, you won't be refuting anything. Well, then good luck and have fun. Okay, so hold triangle to memorize a weak spot. And then press triangle. So, you said Biakia was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird... how? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girl... Wait a minute, uh, Monokuma file to time of death to and found the girl's locker room. So you can view the truth bullets during the you trial. Absolutely take it. That's a natural reaction for any guy. The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. So of course I would suggest we check the girl's locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. What's so strange about that? I wish you'd taken me with you. Okay, so I have to memorize Aoi's thing and then shoot Byakuya's thing. 
Hearing Bianca's comment about Chihiro being a girl is a clear cross dictionary because it doesn't make sense how he could have known before we didn't found it. I need to make the conscious. So, you said Byakuya was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird... how? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the... That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro. No, that's wrong! We didn't know who the victim was! Because the announcement only comes on when three I'll people discover the body. So strange about that. <sighs> because up until we actually discovered the body, yeah, 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 we yeah, couldn't yeah, have yeah, known yeah. who the victim was. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. <laughs> so Celeste is just next to him like... Indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. What do you mean too weak? Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. What's with Byakuya's attitude? He's gonna die and we're gonna be finally rid of him. It's like he doesn't even care. I've got him cornered, but he's acting like there's nothing to do with him. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. There is. I think. The freaking extension cord! There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. I think Kyoko might be the ultimate mastermind because she always seems to know everything. But then she never like really contributes. She's just like, remember Makoto? You know this thing. And I'm just like, just say it then. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? The differences between this case and the other Genocide Jack murders. The evidence that proves Byakuya is responsible hidden in there. What could it be? Hangman's Gambit? Nope. Library desk lamp. What? The difference between the cases? You want me to explain it again? When I want to kill, I use my very own special scissors. And I use those same scissors to arrange the body. But Chihiro was suspended with... It was some kind of rope, was it not? That's right! It absolutely was! Then there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope Lies! No, that's wrong! No, that's wrong! What up, JT? She's the ultimate accountant. Can't point out the problem, but Actually, can't solve it. Hey, I'm Regal, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Seen it before. Because you see that rope, or should I say that extension cord? Oh, now you show the extension cord. What? An extension cord? Yakuya, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time disappeared. Went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. And Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. Yeah, because no one really went to the library. That's really what you think. Then your conclusion is something like this? You shut your face! I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. Yes. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Yes. Is that about right? He's doing it again. He's totally calm, totally unconcerned, as if he's not even involved. Wait, not even involved? What's wrong? I asked you if you think- Hey Kirby, how you doing? Happened. Thanks for joining! Hell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Byaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. What? <laughs> he kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. Um, sorry, but could we hold on just a second? What do you mean? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. No! Oh, uh, I guess we have to because we have to get to the e-handbooks. Oh, gosh. Do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. For real. I know, but still. Pretty toasty toast today. Thank you. I took a shower after exercising. There's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. 
Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Yes, me? just kill him. <laughs> Wait, what was that just now? Something's not right. Chihiro's body definitely was found in the girls' locker room, but does that mean... I'm really just upset what Byakuya said as the truth. No, I don't think so. There's definitely something off about what he said. Not that. It's not that. So, the only thing is the scene of the crime. I got it. You say yeah, because the posters and the, the room, and the right? carpet were switched around. But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. Does anyone like Byakuya? <laughs> For real? She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. The rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. Please tell me. Oh no, he's getting angry. So it was him. That. I believe I do. Hey, Byakuya, did you just? Did I take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Byakuya, who'd been so confident up till now, maybe Byakuya never even realized that the actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. No, I think he knew. Hey, don't just move on without he's killer. permission. What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. Evidence that shows the murder took place somewhere else. There was something that switched between the boys' and girls' locker rooms. Oh, posters! I got it! The proof that she was killed somewhere else is... the poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters? The poster in the girls' locker room was a picture of a big boob super. Big boob super. But don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake. <laughs> Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had a poster of Pretty the boys. super popular boy band Tornado. Again. That doesn't really seem to belong in a boy's locker room. Hey, boys can like boys too. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? Jelly's dream bed. <laughs> no. And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker rooms. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? Protein coffee? While I was protein. in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. No, it's not that the stain was scrubbed away. It was moved to the boys' locker room! I got it! The Did no on one the examine both room the locker rooms when they were investigating? In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. How do you know what it looks like? He didn't bring the whole carpet then, over. Does that mean that the carpets were switched too? But why would anyone do that? Because there was blood on the other one. To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? What? But then why would Chihiro get killed in the boys' locker room. In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but... Why exactly. Why would the culprit bother doing that? Huh? Why would I don't understand the why. Of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boys' locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? Wow! To get into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your e-handbook across the card reader. See, this device. is why I think Chihiro used Leon's handbook, but Leon's handbook is broken. 
but Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her. And Chihiro's handbook is missing. She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. Maybe that's how Chihiro entered because Chihiro lost her hand. No, she can't even get into the boys' locker room. No, she did have a way, and I can tell you what it was. I highly doubt that. Shut up! I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it. Is he right? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Broken e handbook. So it does have to do with the broken e handbook. Is it really possible? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah, I got it. She must have hacked her e handbook. You're not allowed to do that. She was the ultimate programmer, after all. I'm sure that would have been no problem for her. No, I don't think that's it. She used the thing that was in the main hall. How does he also know about it? Huh? What thing? I'm talking about Leon's handbook, of course. If she had that, she could get into the boys' locker room no problem. Theoretically, if Chihiro was able to use Leon's handbook, she could get into the boys' locker room. But when we found Leon's handbook in the main hall, there was no doubt it was... In which case, can we really say that she used it? Okay, so then... It it, it, I was wondering which statement to use it on. I think it's, um... Ito's. Oh! Okay. Did I mean it? No, I missed! <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I missed. Fired in the list. She must have hacked. She was the ultimate. I'm sure that would have. No, well, I don't. She used the thing. Huh? I'm talking about Leon's hand. Please. Yes. No, that's wrong. It's broken. No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh. Well then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. He didn't kill her then. Plus, isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yup, yup, yup! Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then... She must have hacked hers, like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... Psst! You can't fix an e-handbook. The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts blaring. So, if she didn't use I still Leon's handbook... I can't understand why she, she would go into the boys' locker. Handbook. Maybe Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just... wrong? Yeah. No, but... It is a fact that they were switched around. It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Okay then, I vote for Byakuya. Me too. Is that it then? Chihiro was killed in the girls' locker room and Byakuya is the one who did it, really? But still, I don't know what else I can do. Hold on a second. No! I agree with you though. I think you're on the right track. Then just say it. What the? You finally decide to open your mouth and... That's what you've got to say? For real. There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So... Why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. How? What? You can't follow someone else in because Monokuma's like, that would be degeneracy and you're not allowed to do it. What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? Break? I'd like you all to come see something. Wait, 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 wait. Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry. This will make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Well, all right then. I declare an official class trial wow, recess. Wow, this trial's long then. Huh? For real? For having a recess. Now then, what is it you want to show us? It better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. Oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. Can we just go already? So, shall we go? So before I even knew what was happening, the class trial had been put on hold. We headed off with Kyoko in the lead.
And where she took us was... Widow's room? Oh, why back to the... The girls' locker room? We've already searched this place top to bottom! What are you trying to pull, Missy? I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. Why? I want to check it again. Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. Examine her carefully? Why can't you just tell like us, Kyoko? Using our hands? No way, no way, no way, no way, no way! It's probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's not that I'm creeped out or anything, it's just... Based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. But, but you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one Gender of doesn't matter. Go. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. So just leave this to me. S Sakura. What is this? Some kind of secret girl on girl action? Is that what you two are about? That's not it at all. Stop screwing around. I love okay. you, Aoi. You're so cute. Here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. Putting her hands together in a brief prayer, Sakura then began to quietly examine her body. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... Is there another, like, wound? No, it was only one blow to the head that killed her. What? This is... It, what is this? Okay. What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. Sakura's eyes were staring wildly at Chihiro's lifeless form. Her massive frame trembled. This... this girl is... Is what? Dead. Is a boy! Nanoja, you were right! She's a boy! But did she enroll in school as a girl? Because she has a, a girl's uniform. Uh-oh, we are getting to the weird part of the case. Whoa! Ah, I see. Whoa, she really was so a boy. she was actually a he. Interesting. So that's why Chihiro fact. could get into... That's why Chihiro could get into the boys' locker room. And that's why Chihiro was more comfortable with boys, because Chihiro is a boy. But if Chihiro is also worried about getting stronger to, like, match up with, like, typical boys, wouldn't you be more comfortable with girls? Anyway. What? You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. Then... Then it's really true? Chihiro was... a guy? Oh, what? You guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat! I didn't know! Chihiro Fujisaki was totally a guy! <laughs> he was a cross-dresser? Oh, oh, we're really on fire! I wish I had killed him! No, oh, Chihiro was so harmless! That's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? So it's Kyoko just, just, like, waited for us to be like, How is this possible? And then she was like, Surprise! She was a guy. <laughs> yes, that certainly does make things much more exciting. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back to the trial. <laughs> I do apologize for keeping you waiting. Waiting? Now then, let's resume the class trial. We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. Yes, well, I don't know his reason for hiding it, but the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. Man, for like the time she was like, grab Chihiro. <laughs> like, examine their whole body. <laughs> wow, that means Sakura had to like reach between. Yeah, anyways. Wow, when did Danganronpa 1 come out? Because, like, saying that Chihiro was either... She was either, um... 
trans or cross-dressing. Well, I guess cross-dressing is was more like typical and more present in media. But hmm. To think that Shihiro was actually a guy. That had never even crossed my mind. And because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the boys' locker room. But then why do Oh, that's why we needed to find the other handbooks to prove that um, she couldn't, he, he couldn't have used Leon's. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boy's locker room, and was then later moved to the girl's locker room. And the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girl's locker room. Oh. So Chihiro really was That's killed true. in the boy's locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but yes. That because we all possible. thought that Chihiro was still a girl. To make it seem like a girl killed her and not a guy. So what the, the suspect is a male. I wish it was Byakuya, it might not be. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. No, you didn't! I knew he felt a little... off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. So he he really did set up the whole scene to make it seem like Genocide Jack. You're such a douchebag! We could have killed the wrong person! He tried to frame someone else just because he's a bored little prick! This is the most titillating situation! So now everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally then who... become clear. Then was my original theory, right? Is Hifumi the killer? And Byaku... No, wait, but Byakuya didn't know that all this happened. Well, Byakuya could have still told Hifumi to be like, Yeah, killer. Hmm. Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever. We still think you're the killer, remember? <laughs> very interesting. But in that case, if this he's the mastermind and Hifumi is the one that indeed. actually killed her, who would be considered the blacken? The one who thought of the idea or the one who actually pulled off the murder? Ah, he's off in his own little world. What about you, Makoto? Okay, I don't think After it's Hifumi. He seems very calm. Learned. Do you still think Byakuya is the killer? Yes! Well, without a doubt, Byakuya is the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But... But I... I think he might not actually be the killer after all. No. <laughs> what? But aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? He just seems to be too... easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying Then what was the mystery. whole purpose of dressing it up like Genocide Jack? The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? Overt. He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. No? At least, He's just too lazy to look for rope. And Byakuya, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And then again, when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy, if you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but it's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct. What was your for reasoning for... Oh my gosh, I, I can't with this guy. Mark it as correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. How do we know? I just happened to come across the corpse in the girls' locker room and decided How did to you get into the girls' locker room before we found the body? And Chihiro was killed at 2 a.m. What were you doing that late at night slash early in the morning? And you were just like, let me peek in the girls' locker room. What? Are you fucking with us right now? No, I am not effing with you Effie. right now. I'm telling you the truth. Well, I find it very hard to believe. Why would you do it? Go ahead. 
find it very Why would you go into the girl's locker room? You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If you're really telling the truth, then why? Why do you do that to his body? My reasons hardly matter right now. It Uncovering matters much because I want you to, to be gone. Now then, if it wasn't me, who was it? Well, I don't think I can say for okay. sure without talking about it a little more. We're what more can we talk good? about? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Biafia did it. No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility. Because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. If we if we wrongly accuse Byakuya, only the Blacken gets away with it. That's Frack! True. Very well then. I'm with you too. Damn straight. Count me in. Do you not have a mind of your own? Of course I do. What am I, an ant or something? Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have time to make our decision. That's very true. Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? It's not a game! Whatever, whatever. But if Byakuya didn't do it, then who's the real killer? Who murdered Chihiro? There's one thing we can be sure that we know about the killer. The killer was able to gain access to the real murder scene, which means the killer is... What? It has to be a guy because Leon's handbook is broken. It has to be a guy. Since the crime scene was a boy's locker room, you would need a boy's handbook to get in. Since Leon's handbook is apparently broken, the killer would have had to use their own. In other words, it had to have been a guy. But that's still not enough. I need to find some more clues. Celeste's account. Celeste was... She saw Chihiro bringing a tracksuit down. Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to who did it? Well, clues are one thing, but did nobody get a look at the killer? I'm sure if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah, all we need right now is any kind of new info. Should I shoot that? Nope, sorry. Come on, Makoto, don't scare me like that. It makes me think something weird is going on. Shoot. Ah, I'm sorry. Wow, I lost a whole heart. Okay. Isn't there a single I'm gonna fast forward until we reach that statement sure again. I thought I was like helping to corroborate. Like, yes, we. I have new info. It's over. It's all over. You want to know who saw the victim? The killer. No. No, that's wrong. I believe someone else did see the victim before he was murdered. What do you think, Celeste? Now that you mention it, yes, I did see him. Huh? Really? Oh, but I suppose only Makoto knows about Makoto. this. Makoto. The rest of you had no idea, did you? That is why you're all making such ugly noises. Whatever! Just hurry up and tell us! It was last night, right before nighttime. I saw Chihiro in the dormitory warehouse. I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. And then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. Celeste has crazy hair. That's a lot of hair. It must be so heavy. Look, we didn't find anything like that at the murder scene. It seems likely that the culprit destroyed them to get rid of any evidence. And that is when he said something that struck me as rather odd. Better get going, kind of in a hurry. Chihiro told me he was in a hurry. But why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone were waiting for him, I should think. So, Mr. Fujisaki was on his way to meet with someone, and then they were going to work out together? But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Yeah, if we... If Chihiro exercised with Sakura and Aoi... And they're like, whoa, we can't exercise together, because you can't get into the locker room. Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much. 
But who was it? I don't recall anyone being that close with Chihiro. The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. But knowing what we know, I can't even guess. Yeah, who could it possibly be? No, There's nothing. You already have what you need to make the connection. What do you mean? I know nothing. The truth. Celeste's as a dead body. There's nothing. What could there possibly be? You know who the killer is. I don't. S seriously? Who, who is it? Who's the killer? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. I never saw it. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Are you sure? About what? That? Leon was the only real athletic really one. Think we can figure out who did it. And he's Based dead. On two pieces of evidence that we don't have. What? You want to track down some fingerprints or something? Even if we had the equipment for that, we wouldn't know how to use it. As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe, but we can make certain inferences. We inferences are proof! Easy for you to say, but fine. Celeste, did you notice anything special about the If Kyoko knows it, just say it! The bag was... Just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Shahiro's jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket. I don't hotel. know. Do we go into the warehouse now and examine the track suits? Does Chihiro's track jacket really hold some clue about the killer? Somehow it's really hard to believe. I don't understand. Celeste's account again. First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. The he locker was room. On his way to go exercise. Yeah. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the specific track suit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing! But nobody's wearing a tracksuit! So, what you're saying is, the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black! I... I don't even have a tracksuit! Cause exercising sucks! I have a white tracksuit, personally. Wait, everyone has different colors? The warehouse, if you must know. Did any of that really help us get any closer to figuring out who the culprit is? No way. Not a chance. Got him? You heard him, right? Got who? Just this music is a jam. What who said? She's right. What he said just now is really odd. How did he know something like that? What do you mean? First of all, Celeste's account. On the night of the murder, right before nighttime, Chihiro was spotted leaving the warehouse. It seems she was stuffing some blue exercise clothes into a duffel bag. Presumably, she was on her way to exercise, but not the but the clothes were not found at the crime scene. Celeste had not told anyone other than Makoto about this encounter. Wait, wait, wait. Stuffing some blue exercise clothes. I didn't tell- Okay, so nobody knew that Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse before. And it says stuffing some blue exercise clothes into a duffel bag. And Mondo said his was black, and Hiro said his was white. Okay. We know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? 
What do you mean the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing! So, what you're saying is the killer was wearing the same <gasps> tracksuit as him? Wait! My tracksuit is black! Too late! No, I'm sorry. How are you talking about? Just shut up. Be a little okay. I need to think. Oh! <gasps> why? We know he was on his way. So next, but why did he choose? What do you mean? This I got it. It matched the one. So what you're saying is the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit. How no, did you gone. know it was blue? I didn't think that was anything weird. Because. Second, what did you just say? Oh, oh, tricky, tricky. Huh? What'd I say? When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said... Sounds stuffing like a track jacket. She never said the color. Zoom to your sound. She never said anything about the jacket's color. So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? What are you- you just- Hey, Celeste, what color was Chihiro's tracksuit? As a matter of fact, it was- Why would Mondo blue? kill Chihiro? Chihiro Before trusted you! The trial, did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Then- Mondo, how did you know what color Shihiro's tracksuit was? No, or was he working out together and then someone came in after they worked out and and then they killed Chihiro? But because I I just I'm sure he saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. No, that can't be it. Because none of us saw the the tracksuit and duffel bag. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Then the only reason he could have known what color the tracksuit was is if he saw Cherry with it before he died! Cherry? That's the only possibility! Cherry? Are... Are you talking about your hero? So, how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? Oh, her tongue is crazy! Just by chance. I just happened to see it last night. He walked past me. And he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, it wasn't the duffel. No. That can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony, stuff the jacket. Stuff the jacket in their bag in a hurry. It's almost like she's trying to hide it. Touch it down. When Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of oh making sure boy. the jacket was completely in the bag. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. Yeah. Yeah. It would appear you've dug your own grave. Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit and it'll be obvious who- How does with. Kyoko know what the color the tracksuit was? Ah, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue- But how would Kyoko culprit. know? Maybe Kyoko- Okay, I really think Kyoko is the ultimate mastermind. Because she, like, disappears in random times, and she always seems to know everything about all the cases. That's why you said you knew who did it. To put them on so edge. So Kyoko's going to be the ultimate backup. That's right. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. Sh shut up. No, you didn't. But why? What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. Because I hate him. The way he talked, the way he was acting. There will be no reason to hate him. I kind of want to just say this answer though, because it's funny. The way he talked, the way he was acting. I, I'm gonna say because I hate him. Nope. There was a certain turning point that tipped me off. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend to refer to men and women differently. What? You only call guys dude. For girls, it's chick. And after he was killed, you happened to refer to him as dude. I did not notice that. 
Once I picked up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. Wait! Notice such a tiny detail? Is stream value? What does that mean? What? Are you a witch? She's a witch! You're positively frightful! Now I want to go back and, like, look at the dialogue. No. I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. Oh, pick the silly option for stream entertainment. Yeah, I did. And she didn't like it. Yeah. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really kill Chihiro? I, 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 uh... No way. I didn't kill anyone. You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. We barely did anything with you, guy. We've mostly been accusing Byakuya. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah, he would never do something like that. This is a false accusation. It's true. My reasoning on that is pretty shaky. That was fast. Well, this does present us with a problem. It seems... Yeah, we have no concrete proof green. it was... Mondo, but he did say the color of the tracksuit. But again, <laughs> someone else could have come in after my they were done working out and... Come. And killed Chihiro. That's what my little ghost friend is telling me. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Kifumi, weren't you telling me you found some evidence? What evidence? Really? What kind of evidence? Actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. Jeez, does your confidence just get up and walk away? It's fine, man. Just tell us. Just tell us as Chihiro's... <laughs> Dead frame comes into view. If you really insist, then... Um... Here it is. Hmm? What do you have there? Leon's broken handbook? It happens to be an e-handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. You found it on the ground, right? Then it must belong to... Um, Chihiro's? I got it! Chihiro's was missing. We know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the crime, right? For a fact. For a fact indeed. I was totally sure I'd found it. Then it must hold some clue about the culprit, right? Well, that's what I was hoping. But it's busted. It won't even turn on. I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. That's odd. I didn't think the handbooks were quite so fragile. And You're fragile, right. but not They're that not. fragile. They're totally waterproof and shock resistant. It would take an awful lot to break one. So how would you break it? And yet, this one does appear to be broken. As is Leon's, sitting useless in the main hall. For all your confidence, that is a remarkably high failure rate. <laughs> Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? How precisely did the handbooks get broken? I don't know. It obviously didn't get smashed because there's no cracks on the screen. How did the handbook break? There's only one possible explanation. By exploiting a bug, by hitting its weak point, by hacking it? But he said you can't hack it. Hitting its weak point? Exploiting a bug? Maybe he had some kind of bug you could exploit? Too bad for you, but those things have been debugged to hell and back. We couldn't afford a recall. Oh, I guess I should just leave the possibility of bugs Shit. then. Looks like I just embarrassed myself in front of everyone. After the handbook break, there's only one possible... Hacking? No, he said there's anti-hacking. I think it's weak point? I got it. You What's the weak point? Before that the handbook has one weak point, didn't you? I don't remember that. Yeah! You remember that? Uh, sure, maybe I let that slip, but I never told anyone what the weak point actually was. But if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them broke in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? Huh? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. I don't think he cares about a fair trial. But if I tell you, 
and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Then make a rule, whoever breaks their handbook automatically dies. Just tell us already! Why would we want to break our own handbooks? <sighs> oh well, I have a weakness for pushy demands. But you're sure you will follow their example? Then allow me to make a special announcement. The weak point of my cutting-edge e-handbook is... When it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will suffer a meltdown and totally break! High temperature. I flippin' knew it! High temperatures, okay. You knew it? Yeah, cause I found the handbook laying on the floor of the sauna. The temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees. Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? It's because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin. If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you definitely get fried. That's a scary thought. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Wow, interesting. I learned one new fact today. That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. This part of the case seems so, like, it's such normal conversation, so what does this anyway, have to do with... if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, yeah. then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. Quite the mystery. What if they found out by accident? What do you mean, by accident? What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, and it broke? What? They'd realize it was broken, of course. Why would you take your handbook into the sauna in the first place? And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. Oh! Is that why Leon's broke? Maybe before the um the first trial happened. No, the sauna wasn't open during the first trial. I won't say it's not possible, but who would have done something like that? I don't know of anyone who took their handbook into the sauna. I might know someone who did. I don't! Whoa! Seriously? I don't! I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was... <laughs> who might have brought their handbook into the sauna? It had to be the one who wore all their... <gasps> that... That's why the sauna scene was so important. I thought it was just silly, like, bro bonding moment. To be like, haha, here's like a cheeky illustration of, of some half-naked mans. I have to be the one who wore all their clothes into the sauna. If you hit the handbook, that's why he never took off his clothes. Because then we'd see the... Ah. Uh... This time I should have pressed right. Oh boy! Here's my answer! Mondo, your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? He brought his in when he was doing the the manly match with Taka. And then he's like, shoot, my handbook broke. And then that's how he discovered he can break Chihiro's. So how did Leon's break in the first place? What? Why? Why do you keep accusing him? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago, remember? And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize, he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. But also, this is just like crazy conjecture. Without like looking at his actual handbook, we can't say for sure. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. Uh, no, wait, hold on! You've got it all wrong! 
He would never kill. I don't accept this. Show me the yeah, proof. we need the proof. Solid proof. I mean, I don't want to believe it either, but... But I found something that proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. I don't... What else do we have? Broken e-handbook. Oh, if we examine the card reader. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Because doesn't the card reader well, have a... Handbook works just fine. No! Whoops! Good. See? Look! Makoto was wrong after all! Huh? Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! Just because you sat in a sauna once together doesn't mean you're right. I'm sure Mondo's handbook broke during your sauna showdown. If I can just prove that, then that will show that the handbook Mondo has must actually be broken. Let's Wait a minute. What are my truth bullets? Um, card reader. You need to swipe your e handbook over to card reader. You need male students. Um, and then Shihiro's. Did it get updated? And has apparently gone missing. And then, um, what was the last Test bullet? Makoto's Card reader broken. If what he says is correct, broken e handbook. Mondo, um, 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 um. Your... broken e handbook. One of the hand. One of the handbooks found in the main hall is broken, which is apparently a rare occurrence. Junko and Sayaka's handbooks both need some work, so it's assumed that it is assumed that the broken handbook is Leon's. <gasps> That's right, because if. The broken one is actually Mondo's. How would he be able to get into the locker room the next day with Chihiro? His broken e handbook. Your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just No! No, that's wrong. You're using Leon's. Mondo, the handbook you have right now, is it really yours? The fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall, isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. Oh yeah, he did say that too. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then, the broken... Monokuma knew the because when, when we were like, Oh yeah, Leon's broke. He's like, are you sure Leon's is broken? Oh my gosh. Which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's. Yes? But doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your handbook... Oh, we went over this before. It doesn't matter if it's a dead person's. Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student. But if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a great area, I admit. But no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo... If I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch! What's wrong, bro? C come on! Tell him he's wrong! Yeah, bro. You are wrong! You have to be wrong! Everything you just said is wrong! You made it all up! His eyebrows are... I never noticed how long his eyebrows actually are. Okay, then why don't we look back on this case one more time, from the beginning? That way, Why don't we just clear. take we'll his handbook right that he has wrong. on his person, and we'll see if it's Leon's. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's like we don't have any definite proof, guys. This one. There. 
Chihiro goes into the boys' locker room. Get the handbook. Uh, he was like, whoa, whoa, and then they like... Oh, whoa, 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 Um, in goes into there. Uh, that's how Shihiro gets in. Uh, okay, there, I don't think there's one about... Is there a way to, like, look at descriptions? Okay, well, I'll just move on. Let's see. Uh, okay, so I think the... Paint spl blood splatter goes here. Yeah, because then it drops. Uh, roll up. Oh no, that's used to- wait, what? What? Uh. Why would Byakuya go into the freaking girl's locker room, you freak? Uh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Blood loss because you took off the blood from her face. Bloodlusts. Um. Uh. You go to the sauna. What is this? Wait, help options. Uh, turn the page. Truth panels. Hold the X button. Navigate. If you target an empty slash, you can press the X button. You'll be given a hint about what goes there. Okay. Hamper got thrown into the sound. Ha what happened to it? It broke. Oh wait, here's the extension cord. Um. Killer took something from the other locker room and switched it out to see the crime. The full stop. Which locker room did the killer move it to? The girls. You disguise to choose a killer switch around the carpet as well as something else. The posta. But there's two poster ones. Oh well. Um. That's right. The weapon the killer used was. Uh, I hope these are right. Um. I think those are right. Uh. Amber got thrown into what happened to it. What could be left? Here's exactly what happened. I don't see how that one would show it's broken. First, let's okay, whatever. Back to before the incident. Last night, Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right, Celeste? With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. But how could the victim? Oh no! Was it supposed to switch girl, around those two panels? The boys' locker room. Ah! Oh no! I was right. Okay, cool simple because she was really a he which is why he was able to use his own handbook to gain entrance to the boys locker room once inside he met with someone there and the person he met was the one who killed him it seems like ah. the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell cha cha the unsuspecting Jihiro. And attacked him. 
Zip. And that's Swat. where the blood stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. That's a crazy face. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Then, removing the bloody poster. And finally carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room. And he could course. have used either Junko or Sayaka's. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girl's locker room without much problem. And that's exactly how the killer did it. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. They changed the layout of the boys and girls locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. Ha ha ha. Why? That what possessed Biakria no. to go into the girls locker Biakria room? Biakria discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation. Making things even more complicated. Because he's a bored, stupid prick. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library. And then he got to work. You made everything unnecessarily complicated, you stupid idiot. Body. Then... Using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. Also, that's a freaking long extension cord. And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived Asana's at the on song. a different floor from the... Locker room, yeah, because I think Sauna's on the second floor, and the there, locker room and the pool's the first floor? No, switch that. Handbook. The pool's on the second floor. Because I was like, wouldn't they have run into each other eventually? No, he would have come out the boys. I didn't lay out my reasoning right, I need to rearrange the events of this case. What do you mean? What other one is there? Oh, that's a different- I didn't see that before! Here's exactly what happened! And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag, yeah, there, yeah, 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 yeah. they planned to destroy- And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, is the sauna the like constantly on the whole night? That's stand up to the heat of the sauna. That's insane. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook, and that's how it all played out. Ah, oh, the brightness! Oh my gosh! Isn't that right, Mondo ah, that's a crazy face. I got it, Nadoja. You were right. Chihiro was a boy. <laughs> You're like Dr. House. No, wait. Um, my, me and my friends, when House used to be on, every single thing, every single time she'd be like, she's a man or he's a woman. In this case, it was right. Chihiro was a boy. <laughs> wait. No. This can't be right. Where's your evidence? Yeah. Where's your evidence? Yeah, we still don't have evidence. You need evidence! <clears throat> you need proof! But I guess in the end it really doesn't matter if we all decide to vote against him. It doesn't matter. Without any proof, you can't pin any of this on him! Evidence that Mondo is the killer that already revealed itself early in the trial. If I can somehow show where Mondo's handbook is right now. Once I do that, everything will become clear. A new element has been added to bullet time battles. Would you like to hear more? Another! 
Fever time and nega time. During a bullet time battle, if you press the R1 button, fever time will activate and the tempo will be forced to its max. At this point, even if you push buttons at random, you won't miss. So you can push X triangle, X triangle, however you want to destroy the opponent's verbal assault. But this only lasts until your focus gauge runs out, so make the best possible use of your time. Of course, it wouldn't be fair if you got special access. If only you got access to special time, right? So we've also prepared something called Nega Time that your opponent can use. If the opponent activates Nega Time during the Bullet Time battle, your tempo marker will disappear, making it quite a bit tougher to hit the buttons of rhythm. If you were to activate Fever Time at this point, no, never mind. I'm sure nothing would happen. I don't know what I was worried about. Unsurprisingly, if your action difficulty is set to Gentle, the opponent you won't use Nega Nega Time. I am on Gentle. The game literally throws at us. It was so sus. Is Toko okay? Toko's okay. I found out why you like her. She's pretty crazy. Well then, good luck and have fun. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I refute you. False. You're corrupt. Show me some evidence. I won't listen. False. I refuse to vote. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I refute you. False. Show me some evidence. This should prove it. Again, if we look in Mondo's pockets or on his person or wherever and find Leon's. So far is right, Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. Once we do that, we'll... We don't gotta do that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I did it. I killed him. He's admitting it? Ooh, jelly rhythm toes. This guy's the killer? Yeah. That was she that did her voice so good. Yeah, I want to um watch this trial with Japanese voices on because I want to be able to hear her voice. Woohoo! 73 medals! Time to gotcha! Bro! What are you saying? I got no choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just... give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Ask for the goddamn verdict. Roger that! Wait! Hold on! No waiting! No holding on! Time for the moment we've all been waiting for! Grab your lever and give it a yank! Who will you elect as the blackened this time around? Will you make the right choice or the dreadful? Is there ever a time one? I get to choose? Because I want to kind of see what happens if I'm wrong. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? You did it in one stream. Heck yeah! I like the trials are like pretty short. It's the the first part of the day where it's just free time and hanging out that's long and investigating what? that's long uh oh this time it looks like you got it right again yes it is so the blackened that killed chihiro fujisaki was mondo owada i don't have to do his rough voice nice in case you're wondering the vote was not unanimous kiyotaka chose the wrong answer you're treading very close to the danger zone, Mr. Ishimaru. You need to be more careful. I... I refuse to believe it. There's no way. No way he would kill someone. Sorry. What... what is this? Why are you apologizing? Why? Why, 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 why? 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 Why did you do it? Now then. Well, it looks like Mondo's taken a vow of silence, so allow me to explain on his behalf. 
Actually, the story of the murder this time is the sad story of two men. Ha! Oh, but for anyone who doesn't really want to hear it, you can hit the circle button to fast forward the text. No, I want to hear it. Anyway, there was once a young boy, and his name was Chihiro Fujisaki. He had an extreme inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. You're so weak, even though you're a boy. He'd heard things like that as long as he could remember, and he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and bury himself further and further into that weakness. To take on the fragile form of a petite young girl. He had chosen that as his way out. Um, now nobody will be able to say anything about even though you're a boy. But no matter how tightly he wrapped himself up in that shell... The inferiority complex had already taken deep root deep inside of him and was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. I'm weak. Weak, 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 weak. <laughs> Once the killing game had begun here at the school, he had no choice but to accept this fact. After all, this world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. And then the lovely and hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. Which of course included Chihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dresses like a girl, Chihiro is actually a boy! Hey, um... And that was something Chihiro couldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. If that was revealed, it would be the end! The hearted shell would crack and the armor would fall away! Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before! Everyone figured being thrust into such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. What? And yet... I'm sorry. I don't want to talk about it right now. But, but... I want to leave things over here, so maybe we can talk about it later. I'm sure my best if you want to start, I can tell everyone. Annoyingly, he used the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. That's right. Now's my chance. I want to change. I'm going to get stronger and accept who I am. Strong enough so that when someone says, even though you're a boy, I'll be okay. I'll get better. With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so... That day, he made the commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to retrain his mind and body. Wow, that was the first day he decided to do it and then... Wow, that sucks. But sadly... That would be the first and only chance he would get at it. Hey, um... When he decided to start exercising, he thought it would be good to ask for someone's help. But he wanted to tell that person his secret first, and then ask them to help him from there. And the person he went to? Yeah, that's right. It was me. <laughs> yep, it sure was! <laughs> the Biker Gang fella had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Chihiro probably figured that even if he confided in Mondo, his honor would make him keep the secret. Uh -huh. Plus, Mr. Macho Mondo was the very symbol of a strong man that Chihiro has always aspired to. Sakura is stronger, hello. Maybe talking to Mondo about it will help give me some courage. So he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. Whoops. So he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. <clears throat> that was his aspiration. And he thought that only with Mondo's support would he ever be able to come close to that. Correct. So then, that must be why Mondo did what he did, to keep the promise he'd made to Chihiro. What? Huh? Did what he did? You mean that's why Mondo carried Chihiro from the boys' locker room to the girls' locker room? Oh, I thought you meant like actual killing. That made no sense. Indeed. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Um... Wasn't that to cover up what he'd done? Certainly. That could have been part of it, but I don't think it was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men he'd made to Chihiro. He wouldn't have killed him in the first place then! But... But how does moving the body keep a secret? Because... Because if everyone knew he'd been killed in the boys' locker room, then everyone would have been 
been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room, right? Once that started up, at least a few of us would have immediately begun to suspect his identity. So, he tried to protect Chihiro's secret by putting him in the girls' locker room and stealing his handbook, see? Then, Mondo did all that to keep the promise he'd made to Chihiro, who'd also, who he'd also killed? Why would he do that? The more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand. I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? So why? Why did you... Because no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. I knew it. So that's what triggered it after all. The possibility of having your embarrassing memories and secrets exposed. What? What is this? That's impossible. Nothing could have been that bad. Something he didn't want anyone to know, even if it meant killing someone? You're wrong. It's impossible. Don't make me repeat myself. Shut up. How many times must I repeat myself? To judge others by your own standard is the height of folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. <laughs> well, while we're on the subject, why don't I tell you? That embarrassing memory, that secret he didn't want anyone to know. Hey, um... You know what Mondo did? He killed his own brother! In the end, you spoiled it anyway! What's the point of keeping secrets here? Whatever. Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, makes all the hoodlums and riffraff of Custard Crunchy tremble. But the only reason he had the chance to join a gang in the first place was because of a certain someone. <laughs> Va. Mondo's older brother name was Daya Owada. Mondo had nothing but respect for him. It was because of Daya that Mondo ever got on a motorcycle. Vavroom! Mondo's brother was his only family growing up. He was the only one Mondo could trust or respect. He wanted to measure up to his big brother, so he imitated him in everything he did. Mondo was the epitome of the starry-eyed kid brother. Meanwhile, the charismatic older brother had put together a local motorcycle gang. And before anyone knew it, it had grown into the biggest biker gang in the country. Daya, the older brother, number one in the gang, and his number two, his younger brother, Mondo. In the beginning, everything was peaches and gravy. Ew. But when Mondo started to think about how he would have to take over the gang from his brother someday... Why would you have to? His brother's greatness, his reputation began to gnaw on Mondo's very soul. Why would you have to? The kid's gonna take over for Daya, huh? Daya created this gang with his bare hands. Mondo's just along for the ride. Can someone like that really be our leader? All they'll do is make the gang look bad. <sighs> Almost every day, Mondo heard the gossip and whispers of the other members of the gang. Which is why... I... I just... I gotta get stronger. Stronger than Daya. Once. Just one time. No matter what, I gotta win. Don't fuck with me. I don't care what it takes. I gotta come out on top. But why would he take over the gang? I... Why? I don't understand why! And on the... And on the night of his amazing brother's retirement ceremony, Mondo challenged him to a street race. But during the race, tragedy struck. Cha! The kid brother pushed ahead with reckless abandon, eager for victory, and dashed onto on into oncoming traffic. But suddenly... Okay, he didn't kill his brother. The brother knocked him out of the way. Laying in his kid brother's arms, the older brother delivered his final words. My bad, kid. I effed up. Sorry. Of course he knew it was his brother's fault, but Daya never blamed him for what happens. Not his fault. You chose to... Well, I guess you were protecting your younger brother. It's an accident! Hey, kid. The rest is up to you. No matter what, you gotta keep the gang together. Cause it's the team you and me put together. It's a pfft, a promise between men. <laughs> he decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang. In order to keep the gang together and keep the promise to his brother. He can never admit to anyone that it was his own weakness that had caused the accident. And as a result... The team was made even stronger, under the banner of the kid who'd bested his big brother. Daya was gonna lose to his kid brother, so he got stupid and killed himself, and got himself killed. 
That became the explanation for what happened. Mondo's lie became the truth. That's a stupid reason, but okay. He wanted to lead the team so bad he was willing to tell all kinds of lies about his brother. I... I just... I'm strong. <laughs> strong, 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 strong. And yet... <laughs> as soon as our killing game began, he realized... No matter how tough he pretended to be, he was just another weakling that could die in an instant. <laughs> and then the lovely, the hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. At that point, it was clear I would have no problem shedding light on his secret. Mondo killed his own older brother. No matter what, I couldn't let the other gang members find out. But the gang members, oh, he was going to announce it with a loudspeaker. If that happened, everything would have been ruined. Everything me and my brother had worked to create would have been destroyed. His death, all the guilt I'd been carrying around, it would have been for nothing. So that's why. I. That's why I. I. Mondo. Yeah. After I saw what Monokuna had on me, my head filled up with a kind of fuzzy uneasiness and just started swirling around. I never felt anything like it. I never felt anything like it before. I... I... I just... I didn't know what to do about it. I wasn't sure what to think or say, but after a while, that fuzzy uneasiness... <laughs> turned itself into a rock-hard lump of anxiety, weighed down in my stomach. That's called constipation. And it was right around then... that Chihiro asked me to start working out with him. And right there, I... He told me a secret. <laughs> Seriously, Jesus! Uh, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm sorry I lied to you. <laughs> But why? Why now? Why are you telling me this all of a sudden? Huh? Because, I mean, you've kept that secret all this time, right? If anyone would find out, you would... But... You're right, but... I want to change. I've wrapped myself in lies. I'm weak. I want to destroy that version of me forever. His words were like a knife in my gut. I felt like he was exposing the lie I'd been living myself. I have to change. I don't want to be weak anymore. You're so strong. It can't hurt you, right? Whatever secret Monokuma might tell us. You piece of... So what? You're saying I should just say it? What? You're saying if I really am, what? I should just be able to tell everyone my secret? Huh? I was jealous. I was jealous of Chihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weakness, to try and overcome it. It was the kind of strength I never had. So I was jealous of him. And that jealousy broke me. What? You making what? fun of me? I'm strong? Are you effing with me right now? No! I'm not making fun of you. You really are strong, Mondo. I felt like I could hear something starting to creak. Something inside my head. What did he want me to do? What was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to just sit back, let my secret get revealed, and ruin everything? What's wrong? Damn Why did you have to tell me all that? Are you trying to rub my failure in my face? I... I just wanted to... No, I just... I really admire you. I admire your strength. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I am strong. Strong. I'm strong. Strong, 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 strong. Yeah, I get it. Stronger than you. You son of a bitch. And stronger than Daya. I don't remember anything after that. When I woke up again, he was laying at my feet, covered in blood. I had a dumbbell in my hand, and I was just staring at him down on the ground. Hey. I killed him. I killed Chihiro. Even after all this time, I'm still just. How is this embarrassing, or was it just secrets? F for Chihiro. See, it. Yeah, not all of it is embarrassing, because, like, Makoto is like, I wet the bed until fifth grade. Who cares? Accidents happen. This isn't an embarrassing secret. It's just like, oh, shoot. It's a deadly secret. And thanks to that. I did something I can never take back. Mondo. He was normally so aggressive, so angry. He hid that weak side away from everyone. That was a secret. A weakness like that lived in a heart like his, and it turned him cold-blooded. Damn it! <laughs> Look at him! You see? You're all just like him! For a secret from the past, for a memory. <laughs> for that, he killed another living human in cold blood! He couldn't cut free of his regrets from the outside world. He doesn't know what true strength is. 
Do you see hope anywhere in there? Because I sure don't. You bastard! Just shut up, you son of a bee! Go ahead, say that again, I dare you! Yep. Okay, I'll say it as many times as I want. It's what I want to say, but... <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't do that right now. Because the time for punishing is fast approaching. Punishing? It can't be. You mean execution? Well, now, well, now, That's what well, I promised now, well, you, right? Now. The black end that disturbs the peace will be punished. Ridiculous. Hold on. Now then, I prepared a very special punishment. Favorite part. This is not my favorite part. For Mando Awada, the ultimate biker gang leader. No, wait, wait. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time. I said wait. Sorry, man. I couldn't keep the promise we made. From one man to another. How's he gonna go? Oh no. Woo! Oh no, is he gonna get hit by a truck too? He's gonna get truck kuned? Oh boy. Okay. The Cage of Death. Oh, the cage immediately closed. Cool. <laughs> okay, wow. He went so fast he got vaporized? Why did he get turned into butter? I can't believe it's not butter. Why is he butter? Also, compared to Leon's death, I think Mondo had it easier. Well, I guess if you get motion sick, you don't want to, like... I thought, like, it would go so fast that, like, you would see, like, layers of, um... His body get, like, peeled off, like, his skin, his... Slowly, his, like... Muscles and blood vessels, and then, like, even his skeleton would get... Disintegrated. This wasn't as like graphic as Leon's butter on his corn hair. <laughs> Is that why he turned into butter? Oh my gosh! Laugh at death, and your soul will be forever be at peace. It can't be. My brother, dude, you only had one sauna session with him for one day. Like, okay. Another murder, and, the, and another execution. I want to feel again. Everyone's lives are at stake. Everyone's lives are taken so lightly here. I feel like I might be going mad. Maybe I'll just let it happen. Man, he's really taken this hard. They really bonded in the sauna. <laughs> As Taka's sad screams invaded our skulls, we were each forced to realize once again. But he, of course, he had to. <laughs> oh my gosh! Don't judge. Yeah, I guess. But, like, a day? Oh yeah. What a disappointment. This is the end of the game. Akuya? What is this? You're completely insane, you know that? A game? One of our friends is dead, do you realize that? Naturally. Of course I do it, but this game is life and death. Hey. I don't have anything to say to you. I don't have a response except that However. I just don't understand why. Why did you go out of your way to disguise Mondo's crime? What? 
Why? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Because it made things more interesting. Someone... Let's kill him next. Please kill him next. His voice was calm, emotionless. Like the voice of death, it chilled me to the bone. <laughs> Last night when the murder took place, I was in the library as usual. Honestly. So you ignored the nighttime rule too? <laughs> that rule never mattered to me. I don't recall agreeing to it. There is nothing to be done. Well, I don't particularly care. Please continue. <laughs> the night grew late and I decided to return to my room, which is when I stumbled upon him. I spotted Mondo coming out of the girls' locker room. After he'd gone, I looked inside and saw the corpse. You mean... you actually witnessed the murder? He was such a fool. He didn't have the slightest idea that I'd seen him. Well... So you're saying you knew who the culprit was from the very beginning? That's right. Indeed. But if that had been the end of it, how boring would that have been? I mean, what a waste of time to have the answer revealed right at the beginning. Which is why I decided to lend a little helping hand you could have just done nothing and contributed nothing to the trial, and we still- Oh my gosh. I thought it would liven things up. You did all that to liven things up? I see. So after hearing about Genocide Jack from Toko, you decided to use that. To create the fake murder scene? But- But damn, man. If we hadn't figured out who'd really done it, you would've been dead too, right? <laughs> well, obviously I would've revealed the truth before it reached that point. But you wouldn't have proof. <laughs> Of course. Yakuya turned and looked me in the eye. I could feel his sharp eyes piercing into me. Hmm. Thanks to a certain remarkable someone, it never did. And I was able to perform an interesting experiment. Hmm. Interesting. Once I do decide to become Blackened, I know I now know who I'll have to watch out for. What? Correct. So that was your reason. <laughs> Are you satisfied? Indeed. Yes, we're done listening to your story. Moving on. Hey. There's something I'd like to ask Monokuma. What's this? Oh, I'm up next? You... You like to perform these elaborate executions each time, correct? My question is, why? <laughs> Do you like them? But you know, this punishment, this despair, it's not just for you. <laughs> all this punishment, all this despair is my gift to mankind itself. What? You're over-exaggerating. <laughs> I am not over-exaggerating. These punishments are meant to transform all hope to despair. Damn. What do you mean? Huh? Mean? Mean? Yeah. Mean? What the mean, 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 mean. Good grief. I don't understand why you have to pick apart every little stupid thing. <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't matter. In the end, I'm going to stand alone as Victor, and then everything will be revealed to me. Nice PS5 controller, <laughs> thanks. <sighs> Waste of time, quite the opposite. This dude wasted his own time for tell for not telling. For real! Ooh, ah, the noble son of a noble you. family. Truly, you understand me. <laughs> I think this is the start of a terrifying friendship. That's enough. Shut up. I would never stoop to the level of a childish criminal like you. Except you did! Let me just say this. After I have achieved complete victory, you're up next. Hmm. I'm going to find you and kill you, understand? In the name of my family. For which victory is a foregone conclusion. You're getting all riled up! Ooh, so cool! It's like you're the main character of a video game or something. No trash mob for you! He is trash! <sighs> I swear, whatever it takes, I will kill you. <laughs> temper, temper! Sounds like someone needs a nap. <laughs> I really wish Sakura, for the sake of all of us, would get rid of Byakuya next, but I don't think Sakura would be nice enough. I mean, she is nice enough, but I think she's too nice that she wouldn't want to purposely harm another student. But I think if she sees Genocide Jill come out and about, then she might be like, hmm, gotta get rid of you. Monokuma's laughter peeled across the courtroom and the curtain closed on the case of Chihiro and Mondo. But I knew that wasn't the end. The killing game would still continue. Because the mastermind wouldn't let it end. For those of us who were still alive, our worst fear and despair kept on multiplying. It was the kind of despair that felt like a blind puppy in hell had more of a future than us. Wow! All of our courage, our effort, our friendship, it felt like it amounted to nothing at all. It was the worst kind of despair. 
I'm still well, gonna hang anyway, out with Aoi. Like I was saying, and Sakura. This is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? Sayaka? Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. But I must admit, I'm disappointed. I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. Huh? You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Is he talking to Kyoko? Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now. So just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? After all, that's what everyone wants to see. There's one thing I like to ask you. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away. Who is it? The 16th high school student, I mean. Oh, my, my. You really took me by surprise there. I know I said you could ask anything, but... Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied. Because you see... There is supposed to be 16? Ace in the hole. And nobody be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. <laughs> huh? Boy's life of despair. Because they were both boys in despair. Dang. I got his jacket. I want to save the data. Okay, why not? Uh. Oh, oh. I know I shouldn't cry. <gasps> oh no, they're showing her first. Is she gonna is she gonna die next? No. But I've had enough. I can't take it anymore. No! Getting out of here. Anytime soon. Wow. <laughs> Ow. It's impossible. No, 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 Aoi. I can't let myself think about how much I want to get out of here. If I keep thinking like that, I might decide to. No, please, no, stay safe. Oh, no. Donuts. I need to eat some donuts. That'll cheer me up. Lace donuts, twisty donuts, jelly donuts, cream filled donut holes, malasadas. Okay. Oh, God of donuts, I'm praying for a wonderful encounter. I'm sorry. Please forgive me for breaking the nighttime rule. A lot of people have broken it. Owie, it's okay. But please don't die. But right now, for me, donuts are absolutely necessary. Is that a radio or jelly donut toast? She is 18. Oh, I hope they're all seniors at least. Chihiro's not LGBT because the point of Chihiro's character is that he dressed as a girl to escape bullies and people around him telling him to be a man and solve it as one. But it can't be the masculine idea he put into the girl even if he hated it. Okay, so Chihiro didn't really want to be trans. But it was the best way to protect himself from everyone being like, you should be more like a man, and blah, 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 blah. Okay, thanks for explaining that, Yami. Also, hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Sounds like it's coming from the bathhouse. But... Super scared, but... Jelly's favorite. I... Is... Is someone there? <gasps> Oh my god! A next generation legend. Stand tall, galactic hero. He 
bathing suits. A person who is trans reviewed the game says that Chihiro is trans. The game's just bad at portraying it correctly. It's like the episode of the Odd Fairies where a little boy dressed as a girl to escape Francis, but the bully. Francis the bully, but fails. Okay. Um. Okay. I can see. I can see both points where like. Some people say Chihiro just wanted to protect himself and just dressed up as a girl, but still thought of him as a boy. And like the other side where Chihiro really did just want to be a girl, but wanted some more like self-confidence and like self-esteem. So I can see both. Um, no, it's confirmed by Kodaka, Chihiro's creator, that he is cisgender. Oh, okay. Well, also like, I don't know when this came out. It was like probably way before like, um, LGBTQ talk became more um, more commonplace, and also like I don't think Japan's like the best country to like handle topics like that. Twenty ten, okay. Reviewer says they know that. Okay. I tend to like. Hmm. You know what? Like, even though everyone st immediately started referring to Chihiro as a he after they found out, like, he has the physical body of a boy, I'm just like, she, she, Chihiro's just like, you're just Chihiro, man. What? The morning after the conclusion of the second class trial. Everyone met up in the dining hall, just like always. And I expected it to start like any other day. That's what I expected, but... <sighs> Today's count kind of sucks, huh? Toko and Byakuya still refuse to show up. And I haven't seen Miss Asahina anywhere. Hmm. She said her stomach was hurting, so she's taking it easy in her room for today. Oh, that is rather unusual for her. Normally, she is so full of energy. Mm. Which is exactly what makes me worry. So then. So it's just the seven of us then. It looks that way. How about that? It's times like this where the committee chairman needs to get things going with a bang. Oh, <laughs> poor Taka. <laughs> ah. I mean, the bottom line is, if Chihiro's intent was if they actually wanted to be a girl, or if they only acted as a girl to avoid the judgment. Mm -hmm. You could look up the review yourself if you want. Nezumi VA is their name. Mm -hmm. Impossible. Or not. <laughs> Taka hasn't said a word since everything that happened yesterday. One look at his face showed he hadn't slept a wink last night. It must be because of Mondo. The two of them became so close, and then he finds out Mondo killed Chihiro, and then having to watch Mondo get punished and nothing he could do about it. I can't even imagine what it must have done to him. Well... So, I mean, what's gonna happen now? We haven't found any way out, and we have no idea if help's ever gonna come. <laughs> now I'm all it's depressed like... just thinking about it. <laughs> we simply have to make the best of things, do our best to get along, and live here together in peace. Forget about the outside world and accept this new life. That is the only hope we have now. What? To live here forever? Well, here we have every convenience. We have food, clothes, our every need is seen to. Why are you dissatisfied? <sighs> In fact, let me ask you this. What is it about the outside world that you long for? Is that okay? Competition, discrimination, victimization, and violence? As society grows, so does its perversion. In which case, is our current situation not... Demon Angel, pretty pudgy princess. Huh? Here we go. Maggie, the drill shop owner, bunny eared Amazon, cat girl dog boy. What? Robo Justice and the Galactic King. Wait, Robo Justice the Galactic King. And, and. What I mean is, there's no TUD here. There is nothing to be done. The mastermind puts such base desire to their advantage, bending you to their will. You know? Okay, well, anyway, since Taka's like catatonic... Hmm. As the oldest one here, I'm officially stepping up to take the lead. So, we're all gonna work together and spend the rest of the day searching to school. He's gonna die next. <laughs> searching? I'm right, right? Well, I mean, since the class trial is over and all... Perhaps... There should be new places for us to investigate. Hmm. It's either him, go he's gonna die, or Aoi's gonna die. And I don't want Aoi to die. No! Uh, also, chapter 2 is not about gender identity, it's about how toxic masculinity affects men in different ways using both extremes of the, um, expected? Mono being represented as the masculine idea and Chihiro being the opposite. Yep, that point is definitely true. That like, they both had their ideas of what, like, a manly man should be. And it's not healthy! Yeah, that's the ticket. Maybe we'll find some kind of clue this time. 
Well then. Then once we're done eating, let's split up and begin looking around. Do you have any problem with that, Celeste? <laughs> there may well be a discovery waiting for us, which may further enrich our life here. Uh, no, the point is to look for clues. And just as we were starting to come together, she barged in and ruined the conversation. You called for me and so I appear! Genocide! What? Ah, uh, nobody called for you! Uh, um... What the? Alchemist Genocide Jill and not Togo. Yes! This place is just amazing! Finally, a place I can just be my murderous self! Which is why I've decided to stop holding back and spread my wings! No more hiding in a cave for me! Plus, I have another battle to fight. The whole killer with the split personality thing is so overdone. I gotta destroy that stereotype. You SOB! <laughs> I'll fight all day and all night to murder those totally slanderous cliches. Uh, um... But you are a killer with a split personality. <laughs> if she weren't here, my chances of survival would go up at least 10%. Uh -huh. Come on, you gotta back me up here. Even the biggest stars need the little people to hold them up. <laughs> Well, whatever we do today, first we should eat. Can't do anything on an empty stomach. You're right, let's hurry up and eat so we can start our investigation. Uh, what? No one died yet. Okay. You do that, Toko. <laughs> Sawashino VA, please. Um. Uh, whoa! <laughs> you, with respect to, uh, Yasuhiro has crazier hair than Ichiba. <laughs> What is expected of a man, at least in the stereotype of masculinity, is someone physically strong, self-confident, who would never be taken advantage of by others, someone in whom people could trust, among other things. Chihiro saw Mondo as the masculine ideal that he aspires to be, and that is why he asked for his help, but did not consider it a negative event, which is that men are not expected to have emotional restraint, which is why Mondo exploded in a fit of rage. But all- uh, yeah. True. Feeling inferior to someone so far from the masculine ideal. And that's why he felt so weak. And inferior, and he just lashed out instead of being, you know, a reasonable person. And, you know, keeping his emotions in check. Whatever. So we were forced to eat breakfast with a murderer. And after our much-needed but very annoying meal, he set to work looking around the school. I don't think you want to be calling her annoying when she's in her murderer persona. <laughs> okay, uh... I want to go to the vending machine. Okay, I think I'm just- I'm going to end this stream here. I'll just do the um, school store stuff on my own, because I don't think anybody wants to see me do all this again. But we got through trial two. And there were some parts where I was just like, this makes no sense. But hey, I got through it. That's all that matters. Um... Yeah, so I don't know if I'll be able to uh, stream again uh, this week. I'll see how busy or tired I'm feeling. Uh, and then I'm gone for like... I'm definitely gone next week. As I'm going on vacation! I don't want gifts for Yasuhiro. I want gifts for Aoi, please. Um, Ultra Despair Girls play as Toko and Aoi in it too. Whoa! It's not a visual novel game though? Hmm. Flower for you. Thank you! We gotta miss you. I'm gonna... Let me know when you get on 14. Yeah, I'll let you know. Uh, have a safe trip. Thank you very much. I'll make sure to, um... When I'm on vacation, I'll make sure to up, um, update my Instagram. For sure. But that's gonna be it for me tonight. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see y'all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night. Bye!